Hi everyone, welcome to UChicago ICPC. Today we will walk through 2025 Asian Pacific Problem A is a question. How many ways to place four towers on the grid such that each one is in the same row or the same column as the previous tower? What is an example? Here we have those dots are the empty spots and the, the, the other spots are not, are blocked. So we can place tower A at here. Tower B must be in the same row or the same column. So B can be here or B can be here, right? Let's try B being on the top. Where can we place C? Same row, same column. So it is that C can only be placed here? Yes. And now for D, what are the choices? Same row, we can place D here or D here. So let's try placing it here. This is one configuration. And the solution is 20 configurations, 20 ways to place the four towers A, B, C, D. Because you might be able to see we can place A here and B here in the same row and same column, but C, we can't place it, so this is invalid. Now the problem is how to count the number of ways. Let's draw the example again. A, B, idea one, backtracking. What's the original thought? Is it just try A at each of the spots and then try B at all the valid locations and then place C, and then place D. How many ways are there? And what's the time complexity of this problem, of this method? Here, we place A first, like this. How many choices can we place B at? There are n, n squared cells in the grid. So B, how many locations can it be? Is it n squared number of locations? So all the cell can be a potential candidate for B. And now for C, how many locations? And for each B, for each placement of B, we can place C at all the other places. So how many choices of C? Is it also n squared here and n squared? However, if we are careful, we know B can't be all of the n squared locations because it must be in the same row and the same column. So how many cells in a row? There are n, n cells in a row and also n cells in a column. So potential locations for B is not n squared, but just two times n. So this is just two times n, uh, still call it n. Also for C is n. And then for each C, how many locations of D? For each C, is it also n or 2n to be specific? Let's just write 2n. How tall is the recursion tree of backtracking? It did four levels. Four levels. And what's the time complexity? Time complexity for each A, we have two N choices. Let's so go two N. And then for then another two N, another two N, and another two N. So it's two N to the four, which is this n to the fourth power. Does that suffice? No, we need an n squared solution. So the backtracking method is a little bit too, too long. Let's try the second method, which is can we use, can we save some of the states? Save the previous calculations to avoid some duplicate computations. And that leads to the, the idea of dynamic programming which is to save the states and build upon the previous solutions. Okay, idea two, dynamic programming, which is to save some of the states and use the previous subproblems. So check this out, say DP of case tower at location I and J records the number of ways to place the case tower at IJ location. Number of ways of placing the case tower at location IJ. 
how many choices of k? So k can only be a, b, c, d, so 4, right? And i and j can be how many? i is the rows, so it's n. j is also the row uh, column, so it's n. k is 4. So n, 4 times n squared, which is an n squared solution. All right, so we are on the right track. So let's give an example. What does dp3 at the location this columns 1, 2, 3? Placing the third tower C at location 2, 3, right? At this location, at the location. How many ways is it of placing this? So we need to use the previous tower's position, which is the second tower, tower B. If we place C at this position, what can the previous tower's location be? Is it this cell, this cell, this cell? So only the cells and with, within the same row and column. So potential B, B1, B2, B3. Those are all the candidates that allows a placement of C. So here we get the number of ways is dp of the second tower at where? So b1 is at 1, 3, plus choice of the second tower, the so tower 2 at, is it 2, 4, right, location 2, 4, and dp second tower placing at, so placing tower c at here is the combination of the ways of placing b here, placing b here, placing b here. Therefore, we just loop through all the columns and all the cells, which is uh, one, I mean, one column and one cell, which is just n. So here, there are at most n, n previous choices. However, we are able to pre-compute a lot of these. So the total time is still, but without optimization, you see that to fill in each cell, it will be 4 times n times n and multiply by n. But pre-computation, pre-compute all the cell sum and column sum can give us a n squared solution. This is n cube, but pre-computation is n squared. But anyways, n squared n cube is better than the backtracking method. Now, what is the problem with this method? How to avoid overlap? For example, what if the place we place B at A's position or placing C at A's position? Now we are able to avoid uh, placing C can able to overlap with A. And how to avoid that? Let's erase the example. Let's see how many cases uh, will we overlap. D, we know that it won't overlap with the previous cell, but how to ensure it doesn't overlap with B or A. And for C, we know it won't overlap with B because, uh, but how to avoid overlapping with A? How to avoid overlap? So there are three cases. A is equal to C, B is equal to D, and A is equal to D, right? This might seem a very hard problem and you might give up the DP method, but there is a clever way to deal with this. Let's define sum k to be the sum over i and j of dp k i. So the solution we want to find is sum 4, right? We want sum 4. What does that mean? It means placing the four, fourth tower at any location. How many ways are there in total? Place the fourth tower at any location. What does sum 3 means? It means placing three towers in any location and how many ways. After doing the dp, we are able to get sum 4, which is placing four towers at any location. But what do we need to subtract it from? So our answer is equal to sum 4 minus the ways that when D overlaps with B, D overlaps with C, and C overlaps with A, minus the invalid configurations, which is the case when A overlaps with C, minus B overlaps with D, and minus 
A overlapping with D. Don't worry, this is our answer. Sum four means placing four powers arbitrarily. Like they can all, all squeeze in one cell and overlap. So we are now try to subtract the configurations where D and B overlaps or C and A overlaps and so on. How to compute the ways of A equals to C, those number of cases. To make it more specific, we want to subtract invalid cases. So let's use a union symbol. Subtract those invalid configs. When A equals to D, that can be a separate case. Let's first see what this union is. A equals to C and B equals to D. If we draw a Venn diagram, here is the configurations of A equal to C, and here are B equals to D. And here is when A equals C and B equals D. So for this circle, this means A equals C and B not equals D, right? This left circle. And what does this correspond to? On the graph, when A and C overlaps, but uh, B and D doesn't overlap, is it just placing three towers arbitrarily? Because B and D doesn't overlap, it follows our rule that the next tower doesn't overlap with the previous tower. So this is just sum, sum three, right? So sum K means the next tower doesn't overlap with the previous tower. Some k guarantees this, but it doesn't guarantee skip overlapping, Ooh, such as a and a and c overlapping, and a and d overlapping. Those skip overlaps. It only guarantees the adjacent overlaps, but possible skip overlaps. So only when we have the b not equals to d condition can we use this sum three. Because if D can overlap with B, then it's, it's not this no adjacent overlapping condition. So we cannot use sum 3's result. And this is why we use the left circle is sum 3. And the right circle, this is A equals, A not equal to C and B equals to D. On the graph, when B and D are equal, but c is not equal to a and c is not equal to b so this is also satisfying the sum k definition which is no adjacent overlaps because c and b it doesn't overlap but it's possible that it has a skip overlap so this is some also sum three which is arbitrarily producing three towers without adjacent overlap now, what is A equals to C and B equals to D? So after placing A and B, C must be placed at A, A and D must be placed at B. How many ways are there? It is just only the ways of placing A and B. So it's placing two towers. This is equal to placing two towers, which is sum two. So those are placing three towers. However, if we use two sum three, subtract a sum two, right? So in this di one diagram, this equal sign here is equal to sum of four minus sum three plus sum three minus sum two, because we are counting, double counting the intersection. So two times sum three minus sum two. Uh, and also union, union the case of A equal to D, right? And finally, how to compute the case of A equals to D, how many ways, is equal to A. Let's try placing. So A must, uh, A and B are in the same row, and C can't be here, right? So C must be also in the same row as A and B, so that D is able to be in the same row as A, so that they can overlap. So D being here means that C must be in the same cell, the same row and column as, as A, and B must also be in the same and same row and column as A. So when A equals to D, all of them must be in a line. 
So either is this way, so A, B, C, and D here, or it can be A, B, C, and uh, D, or which is overlapping with A. So the second possibility is A, B, C, and D. So how many ways are there of placing A, B, C, D in the same row or a column? Is it just placing is it just placing three items in a row? Number of ways placing three items in in a row. And how many ways are there? If the row has say has a p cells, p empty cells, the number of ways is it just p times p minus one times p minus two. This is the ways of placing a and placing b and placing c. So finally, what is our answer? So the answer is sum of 4 minus minus 2 times sum 2 minus the center overlap, which is sum us, which is sum 2, and then plus the placement of a equals to d, which is plus p times p minus 1 times p minus 2, and multiply by 2. Yeah, so this is our final solution. And p is just the number of cells for each row and column, the number of empty cells. And the time complexity of the dynamic programming, this dp, k, i, j solution. And the second step of this sum calculation is just summing together all the i's and j's, which is o n squared again. So its total total is also O n squared. N squared, N squared, the total is N squared. So the difficulty of this problem, there are two points, dynamic programming and this Venn diagram of not double overcounting. Here, sum of k is, has a crucial definition, which is the ways of placing k powers arbitrarily but without adjacent overlaps. Thank you for watching.